everyone. Welcome to Rika's Reading Room. Today, I'm going to read a story about a famous female judo master. Enjoy. Rina Glickman, Queen of Judo, written by Eve Nadal Kadaravas, illustrated by Martina Peluso. In 1935, Coney Island was one of the most exciting neighborhoods in New York City. People came to swim, eat popcorn, gawk at rare animals, and enjoy thrilling rides. He came to have fun. Coney Island was where feisty, red-headed Rena Glickman was born. Rena's life wasn't much fun. She lived in an apartment that was cramped and loud. Not even Shabbat brought quiet. There was never enough money in the Glickman family. Rena's parents didn't give her much, but they did give her a nickname, Rusty, after a strayed neighborhood dog with red fur. Her mother made a little money working at a hot dog stand. Rusty worked there too. Peeling potatoes for French fries and selling cups of ice water after school. Rena loved her brother Charlie. She wanted to be just like him. So when Charlie lifted weights and did push-ups, so did Rusty. She became strong. That gave her the confidence to speak her mind, whether people wanted to hear what she had to say or not. The Glickman's neighbors disapproved of Rusty. That girl's trouble. Why has got to have her way? So stubborn and bossy and unladylike. Keep your distance, mothers warned their daughters. Rusty went looking for friends. In rough neighborhoods like hers during the 1950s, teenagers sometimes formed street gangs. Rusty became the leader of a girls' gang. The gang members dressed alike and looked out for one another. Sometimes they fought with rival gangs, so Rusty put her strength to use. She was always trying to improve her self-defense skills. One day, a friend of Charlie's showed Rusty a move he learned in a judo class at the YMCA. He weighed much less than Rusty, but before she knew it. He knocked her legs out from under her and flipped her like a pancake onto the floor. Slap! Rusty sprang to her feet, amazed. She wanted to learn how to do that. The next day, Rusty rushed to the YNCA and begged the judo instructor to let her join his class. He told her that the class was for men only, but Rusty kept coming back every day. Until he finally agreed to let her join. The YMCA had no women's locker room, so Rusty changed clothes in the broom closet. She worked harder than any of the men, arriving earlier and staying later. She finally found a place where she could be herself, where no one told her to act more ladylike. In judo, her toughness was accepted, even encouraged. Rusty thought about judo all the time. She thought about while she washed the dishes. She thought about it at her job as a telephone operator. She dreamed about it in her sleep. While waiting on the subway platform each morning, she pressed her hands against the wall, thrusting her body forward, trying to perfect a throwing technique called all uchigari. She practiced foot sweeps called the ashihai on unsuspecting trash cans. On the train, she did hundreds of leg strengthening squats. Fellow riders gave her strange looks and backed away. Rusty didn't care. She always said, "In life, you're either the hammer or the nail." 
Rusty had no intention of being the nail. By her third year of training, Rusty had taken down half the men at the YMCA. She decided it was time to compete in a tournament, something no woman had ever done. Rusty entered the YMCA Judo Championship disguised as a man. She won her match, and her team won the tournament. But an official became suspicious. Just as he was about to place the medal around her neck, he pulled Rusty aside and asked her if she was a woman. Rusty nodded, and the medal was taken away. It's a horrible feeling, like I did something wrong by being a woman. Rusty didn't give up on competing. In 1962, she flew to Japan to study at the world-famous Kodokan, global headquarters of the judo community. She was the first woman allowed to train there, practicing nine hours a day. There, she met Ryohi Kenokogi, a judo, karate, and stick fighting expert. As they trained together, they also fell in love. Ryohi and Rusty left Japan for New York, where they got married and opened a training center near Rusty's old neighborhood. They devoted their lives to making women's judo a popular sport. When men's judo became an Olympic sport in 1964, Rusty thought women's judo should be included too. She wrote thousands of letters to athletes, referees. Politicians and celebrities, asking for their support, she stormed into offices and made phone calls to anyone who would listen. She argued with members of athletic organizations who insisted that Americans weren't interested in watching women perform judo. Rusty wouldn't back down. She started organizing women's judo competitions. In 1980. She used almost all her money to help pay for the first women's judo world championship. The event was a success, convincing many people that women's judo was an important and interesting sport. Rusty's persistence paid off. In 1988, women's judo finally became an Olympic sport, with Rusty as the American team's coach. For the rest of her life, Rusty continued to promote the sport she loved so much. She taught other women to believe in their abilities. She told all her students what she'd wished she'd been told as a child: "We're going to build on what you have, because you have a lot." D end. Thanks so much for listening to my reading. I hope you loved it. Please hit the subscribe button and have a wonderful day.